You've changed your settings, you've watched the videos, and you have done countless hours of Terrace Hunt. But your aim still kind of looks like mine? Or maybe you're just a new player and you're finding the steep learning curve of Rainbow Six Siege overwhelming. Either way, that's what this series is about. I teach you how I can still get MVP and actually have fun in this game, even though I have really bad potato aim, so stay tuned. Hey, what's up everybody? GamingMom82 here, and on today's episode of Bad Aim No Problem, we're gonna be going over the map theme park for Rainbow Six Siege. If you're new here, welcome. And if you've seen my series before, please feel free to skip ahead. I'm gonna jump right into my golden rules that I start every video with just to make sure we're always on par. And on that note, let's get into it. So my number one golden rule when it comes to Rainbow Six Siege is the 80-20 rule. And what I mean by 80-20 is that humans are creatures of habit, use it against them. I find that if you pay attention in that first round, whether it's your first attacking round or your first defense round, See what the enemy team is doing. Where are they entering the building? What operators are they picking? Are they spawn peeking? You can figure all of this out, usually in the first round pretty easily. And odds are the next round, they're gonna do it again, except you can use it against them. So that's what I mean when I reference the 80-20 rule. So now, because we're dealing with theme park, it's not a house like my last episode, so it's a little bit bigger, I'm gonna jump right into the defense operators and we'll get into those objectives and those tips and tricks. So when it comes to defense operators, I usually always pick operators that are either trap or information operators. For me, that would be Frost, Ella, Legion, Tapcan, Lucy, or Alibi. Now, you are obviously free to pick whoever you're comfortable with. I recommend that over anything. I choose these guys just for the simple fact that with when it comes to Rainbow Six Siege, anything that gives you a leg up to let you know that either you're getting flanked or somebody's, you know, in your trap so you can get that free little one kill is very important for somebody who's either a new player or just has bad aim like me. All right, so with defense operators out of the way and basic rules, let's get into those objectives. Now, Theme Park is a two-story map and it has four objectives. Downstairs has Throne and Armory and Lab and Storage. Then on the second floor, there's going to be Bunk Daycare and then Office Initiation. Now, I'm going to be going over each objective individually and my strategies for each one. But to start this off, let's just say you're overwhelmed, it's too much to learn in one go, use this strategy. This is a blanket strategy that you can pull off and it doesn't matter which objective you're defending. So for the sake of this example, I'm gonna be using cap can and the first thing that you should do for this is throw two traps in the objective, whichever one it is. Just make sure whatever operator you pick has grenades, a secondary shotgun or C4, cause you're gonna need it. If you're downstairs, run upstairs, or if you're upstairs, just go over to this window. And the first thing you do is put a trap on this window. Then once that trap's on there, I want you to turn around right behind you on the door frame of outside of cafe, put another trap where it's pointing. Now, once you have both those traps on, I'm gonna have you just walk around and go towards bunks where you're going to be putting another, another trap if you are cap can on that door frame. What? Now the reason I had you put traps on the upper arcade window, the cafe door frame, and also the bunk door frame is because this is covering your back as the ar upper arcade window and the cafe area are very, very popular points of entries for attackers. So this way, when we're moving forward with the strategy, your back is covered and you can focus on the next step. And now the final piece of the puzzle is once you have all that done, I want you to be in bunks and I want you to either grenade, C4, blow out with your shotgun a hole right below this shelf. Now the reason I had you do this is if you look now through the hole, you're gonna see the windows in the barrel room. And it is a very popular point of entry for attackers on theme park. Now, if you're not familiar with Barrel Room, I am just jumping over the ledge here in Arcade Entrance, and that is Barrel Room window, right where it's pointing. So I highly recommend using this strategy if you're kind of overwhelmed by it all and you just want to focus on one thing at a time, focus on this one and kind of branch out from there. Okay, now with that strat out of the way, 
Let's go into each individual objective and I'll go over what I do for each one. But for the sake of not having an insanely long video, I am going to whip through these tips fairly quickly. If you have any questions at all though, just comment below and I'll try to help out in any way that I can. So with saying that, let's get into objectives, starting with throne room, armory area. So the first thing I wanna point out is if the objective is in throne room you need to be very wary of this drone hole. It is very popular for getting grenaded. So if you're in this area, just again, be mindful so you don't get blown up. All right, so when in this objective, put down two of your traps, usually in doorways, I tend to pick frost, so I'll throw up a shield and I'll put a trap down. But then after I'm done helping out, reinforcing, do what I have to do, the very last thing I do is I run all the way to the barrel room that window again very very popular window i usually throw a frost trap down and then i will go hold my angles from lab because it's very easy that i can flank from either direction depending on what the enemy team is doing on a side note if you find the enemy team is pushing hard from the other side of throne room and you're feeling ambitious you can always go up into control room and blow a hole downwards to where you can help cover that side of throne room. So the next objective we're gonna talk about is lab storage. So I focus on three windows with my traps. If you have extra ones, obviously throw them around. Um, but again, shocker, I do the barrel window, very popular. I will then go and do the window in storage itself and also a, the window that's off of the bathroom. As per angles, I tend to usually sit on yellow stairs but I find when it's lab storage, I kind of go based off of my team, see what they're doing and see what needs to be covered. Okay, so next we're gonna go over bunk daycare. If the objective's in bunk daycare area, then cafe, upper arcade window, no brainers. If you're frost, I really have a lot of luck if I put a frost trap on yellow stairs just off to the side. And when we're dealing with cafe, I put the trap off to the side of the door. I find for some reason people really don't pay, they drone, but they're more focused on if people are in there and they tend to miss the trap if I put it there. Those are my biggest things that I do for when it's bunk daycare. On a small side note, I shot out the floor first because the floor was breakable and then I put my trap down. It's kind of nice, especially for new players if you're trying to learn the map or some new tricks or you just don't wanna do a one-on-one -on -one gunfight and you wanna play vertically, shoot out the floor if you're able to, and then you can go around from below in this case, and you can also do it from above. And if someone hits your trap, you can shoot them without having to worry about possibly getting killed by one of their teammates that is gonna to come to revive them. And last but certainly not least is office initiation. If this is the objective, I will place a frost trap below the bathroom window right off of office. Then I will put a shield into the door frame between office and bathroom and I will place another frost trap. And after that, the last one I usually place will be just to the left of the door, like what we did in cafe. You can also shoot out the floor and work from below if you feel the need that you're, you want to do something like that. And once all that's said and done, I usually will hold an angle in cash room just because I have two points of entry, I can flank around if I need to, and I'm pretty close to objective. Now on a side note, when it comes to office in particular, watch out for this drone hole because just like in throne room, a very popular thing to do is to throw grenades into that drone hole and get you because a lot of people like holding this little tiny area behind the desk. Another popular thing to do as well is to hold vault if you wanted to stay in objective. Just make sure that this wall is reinforced because people can come across on yellow stairs and get at you, which is also a very popular thing for attackers to do. And speaking of attackers, I pretty much covered everything I need to for objectives on the defense side. So why don't we hop on over to the attack side and I'll give you all my tips and tricks there. So first and foremost, I always like to pick operators that have claymores or anti-flank gadgets. And those are Thatcher, Thermite, Twitch, IQ, Buck, Capitao, Jackal, Sophia, Maverick, Callie, and zero and then i also like nomad with her air jabs and last but not least is gridlock with her barbed mats now there's three spawn points as attacker you can pick main entrance teacups or bumper cars 
Now, I highly recommend that when you spawn into the map, no matter which spawn point you pick, just stay still for a couple seconds. Because if an enemy is going to do a run out and try to get you in your spawn, they'll get detected outside. So I always recommend that you just wait a couple seconds after you spawn in just to see if an enemy is gonna do that before you move forward. Now, when it comes to my recommendations for spawns, I would recommend teacups. I find it my favorite, but for two reasons. One, I can spawn and go left or right and not get spawn peaked right away, combined with the fact that most of the time, I will always set my drone ahead of time in the lab storage room more storage the storage window i find for me personally is the least defended i usually can get in without being noticed which is very very important in rainbow six siege so speaking of important just a little quick freeze here there are three outside cameras and there are four inside cameras they are very important to take out i will put a little video collage at the very end of this video of where all the cameras are on the map. Okay, back to it. So it doesn't matter whether the objective and they're in bunk daycare, whether they're in office and whether they're in throne room, I will always go in lab. With the exception, if they are in lab, if that's the case, then I will go in the first floor maintenance window located right here. Again, I choose it for the simple reason that I don't think it's defended enough when the lab storage area is the objective. Another quick note is where most people like to go and find the objective with their drones, I highly recommend you save your drone and use it to and place it into the room you're going to enter. For me, that would be normally lab storage area or in this case on the screen, first floor maintenance. Next, I wanna go over the power of claymores. So what I'm gonna do is show you my favorite drone holes to place claymores in to get some pretty decent kills. The drone hole on the screen right now is on the corner of joint and yellow corridor. And when you put this down, it will go directly into the lab. And most importantly, it goes into this little corner where defenders usually like to sit and hold angles. So I very much enjoy this one. And you'll notice a lot of times too, you can, if, especially when it comes to bomb, you can plant a diffuser, but if you preset that claymore, you can make sure the diffuser's around it. So even if you get killed, there is a chance that they won't notice it and you might win the round. So that's always handy. The next drone hole I want to recommend is an armory. There's actually two. So you're going to have one by the doorway by fireplace. And again, you can put this both ways. So if you're in there, you point it out and you're gonna get them in the hallway or you can reverse it and cover that doorway. The other one is just off to the side of it. And again, you can push that both ways. I find this one is a little bit more successful if it's in the hall versus inward, but when people are holding angles, you just, you do what you gotta do, right? Okay, so the next one, we're gonna be moving upstairs into second floor yellow corridor. And there's a drone hole in between the two vending machines. And this one is usually very successful. So if you put this down, it's going to go into office. So if the objective's into office, a lot of people like holding behind that desk. And yeah, this one's pretty cheeky for kills. The next one is also in yellow corridor and it's hidden in between the tipped over vending machine and the doorway of bunk. This one is very successful as well because a lot of people like hiding into this corner. Quick note, don't forget the power of stairs. There's three stairs. They're all right here on the screen. Claymore them, cover your flank. Or if you have the opportunity, bust a hole in a soft wall and create your own drone hole. The enemies won't usually suspect that. And my last tip when it comes to claymores is if you have a teammate that's being interrogated by Cav, throw down a claymore. In this case, you'll see, I already knew somebody was at top of yellow stairs and I died. But so did they, because I threw that claymore down. And I know people might say, well, hey, why didn't you just wait for him and do the gunfight? Well, because I have really bad aim and I know I usually fail at those. So that's why. Okay, my final piece of advice when it comes to attacking is the new ping system and helping your team, communication. So I know some people be like, hey, I don't have a mic, I solo, I have anxiety, I don't feel comfortable talking. Well, that's where that ping system is so powerful. You can, I don't recommend scanning them. You can do the yellow ping system now, which is pretty amazing and let them know. Let them know where the enemy is and do what you can to communicate 
as best you can. And on that note, I think we're ready to wrap everything up. I hope some of these tips and tricks have helped you. If you have any questions, please comment below. I'll try to help again any way I can. And yeah, if you like this kind of content, please like and subscribe, support the channel. I'd really, really appreciate it. And other than that, I'm going to throw in all the cam spots at the end of this video. And I hope you guys have a fabulous day. Till next time.